What's going on guys, Billy here, and the DJI Matrice 30 comes equipped with two different cameras that are fixed to the front of the drone itself. This means that there are two different versions, the M30 and the M30T. They're priced at $10,000 for the M30 and $14,000 for the M30T. And the only difference between these two drones is that the M30T has a thermal sensor on its camera. Now, if this camera looks familiar, it's because it is directly resembling of the larger H20 and H20T camera that was designed for the M300, which is the bigger brother to the M30. What's really impressive though is that despite shrinking down the size of the camera to fit on a smaller airframe, the M30 and M30T camera has a very similar spec list and feature set as those larger cameras like the H20 and H20T. Now in this video, just know that whatever I say about this camera is going to apply to both the M30 and M30T, but when I go in depth about the thermal uh, specifications, the thermal features, and show you some example thermal images, those are only going to apply to the M30T. So in Inside of this tiny camera, we have four total sensors. There's a wide angle lens, a zoom lens, a laser rangefinder, and the thermal sensor. Right within the Pilot 2 app, you can use the left and right function buttons to switch between these views quickly, depending on what you need for any situation. Much like our overview of the H20 series of cameras, I first want to touch on the color RGB sensors, so this would be the wide and zoom camera. Per usual, I want to quickly compare specs between these two cameras, which actually have the same sized sensor, so both of them have a half sensor, although the zoom camera utilizes what's called a quad bear sensor, which gives it a higher megapixel count, so it can capture 48 megapixel photos compared to the 12 megapixel photos on the wide camera. In the video department, they are neck and neck though, both capturing 4K video at 30 frames per second. This is a much needed improvement over the wide camera on the H20T for the M300 that maxed out at 1080p, and I'm still really not sure why DJI did this and didn't allow it to shoot 4K video. Now in real world use, the 12 megapixel photos that the wide camera captures on the M30T are more than usable. They're sharp, detailed, the dynamic range is great. It's really everything that you would need from a drone that's built for inspections and search and rescue. The 4K video is also great to have, but I probably wouldn't use this wide camera as a means of capturing data. That's going to be reserved for the higher megapixel zoom camera. Instead, the wide camera is great for getting around, so I almost use it as a stabilized FPV camera that allows me to maneuver the drone around. I also use it for capturing larger areas where it wouldn't make sense to use the tighter field of view on the zoom camera. So as you've seen, these are photos and video clips of entire structures or roadways and nothing that's really detailed like say an air conditioning unit. Now getting into the zoom camera, it's great that we have the ability to capture 40 megapixel photos. So these are 8,000 pixels by 6,000 pixels because this is where we would want to show as much detail as possible. These example images that I've captured are from me kind of flying and messing around doing almost mock inspections of the structures around where I live. Using the power of the zoom allows me to keep my drone a safe distance away from obstacles while getting a closer look at say the air conditioning units on the roof. Now much like the bigger brother, the H20 cameras made for the mature 300, the amount of zoom that you have on this camera is nuts. It's not able to zoom in quite as far as those larger camera systems, but I think that the 200 times zoom that the M30 and M30T cameras have will be plenty for your day-to-day -day operations. Now to get into specifics, the focal length of the wide camera is a 24 millimeter equivalent, while the focal length of the zoom camera begins at 113 millimeters and optically zooms in to 405 millimeters. That means our optical zoom range is between five times and 16 times. If you're paying attention, that leaves a big range between the wide lens at 24 millimeters and the zoom lens at 113 millimeters. So in order to achieve a smooth zoom, the wide camera will digitally zoom between one and five times. There's also quite a good amount of digital zoom after the 16 times optical zoom to get us all the way out to 200 times. What's nice about this digital zoom though is that it utilizes the higher resolution quad bear sensor to give us a cleaner looking image. One thing to note is that controlling the camera as you zoom in can be difficult as your movements are amplified with a tighter focal length. So this pair of RGB cameras on the Matrice 30 are really powerful. They're great for use in law enforcement, search and rescue, inspection use, really you name it. These are gonna be able to get the job done for you. But what I think makes them even more powerful is the remote controller, the RC Plus that shipped here with the M30 and the M30T. The reason I love using this remote so much is because of all the physical buttons, the dials, the switches. 
you can jump between camera views effortlessly. You're able to zoom in and out effortlessly as well. So you can take really good advantage of this powerful camera system using this awesome remote controller, which I covered in a full separate video. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link down in the description below in my Matrice 30 playlist. Okay, so now that we've covered everything that there is to know about the color cameras, it's time to jump into the thermal sensor, which is very similar to the thermal sensors found on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced and the H20T built for the Matrice 300. They all have the same color palettes, the same photo and video resolution, and the same refresh rate of 30 hertz, giving you a nice smooth viewing experience and smooth video. The images themselves are super detailed when looking at the files on your computer. That goes for both the photos and videos, and they even look sharp being streamed live back to your remote as you're flying around. So for search and rescue, law enforcement, or data collection, this is going to be a great tool to use at nighttime. There are also various different color palettes, as I've mentioned, so you can adjust what you're looking at depending on what type of mission you're flying or based on your own personal preference. I know that purchasing the M30T version of this drone means that you're spending $4,000 for basically just the thermal sensor, but I would say that it's absolutely worth it for most use cases. If you're, say, a law enforcement program looking to save some money and you end up going with the base model with no thermal, you might regret it when you're trying to operate your drone at nighttime because it'll be pretty much useless without infrared. Now, within the Pilot 2 app, you can toggle a side-by-side -side image so that you can see a color version from the zoom camera right alongside a thermal view. Even on the larger display of the RC Plus, though, I kind of find it hard to use side-by-side -side effectively. Like, each of the boxes are just a little bit too small. So I think the best way to go about it would be to run an HDMI from the remote to a larger display, like, say, a 40-inch TV, and then side-by-side -side would be way easier to use. There's also some other great tools built into the Pilot 2 app while using the thermal camera, like being able to tap on the screen to see the temperature of a specific spot. You can also create a box to view the hottest and coolest spot of a specified area, and you can choose to receive an alert if the temperature exceeds a certain limit inside of that area. This would be great in the case of, say, fire management, where those on site need to know if certain parts of a building fire reach a dangerous threshold. One last thing I should also mention is that this is a radiometric sensor that saves all of the temperature data within the photographs that you capture, so you can bring it into DJI's thermal analysis tool built for this camera and change things like your color palette, temperature range, and you can even find the exact temperature of certain spots in the image. This is great for those conducting aerial surveys that need to go through a round of post-processing on their images to find and analyze, say, the difference in temperature between two different points. Okay, so that's pretty much everything here that I wanted to cover in regards to the thermal camera. Now, on to the final thing. Don't think that I forgot, and that is the laser rangefinder. Within the Pilot 2 app, they have now made it way easier to view the distance that your laser rangefinder is picking up. So, to enable the laser rangefinder, we simply select the laser icon on the left side of the remote, and now right in the center of the screen, we'll be able to see how far the subject that we're looking at is. In the old Pilot app, this information used to be tucked away in the top left corner, but now it's front and center, so you don't have to shift your eyes around the screen. Not only can you see the distance between your drone and that subject, but using that information, you can also see the exact location of where you're pointing on the map, which makes communicating with other teams super easy. If you're chasing after, say, a suspect, there's no more trying to guess where he or she is. You can now give exact coordinates or maybe even nearby landmarks to give precise directions. This is helpful during search and rescue missions too, so if you come across something, you can pinpoint the exact spot of interest and even save that by dropping a pin using the function buttons at the bottom. This pin will be displayed as an augmented reality point on your main flight screen and will stay bookmarked on your map for reference. So that pretty much wraps up our coverage of the specifications of the camera system here for both the M30 and the M30T. We shared a lot of different example images, which I'll make available for download through a Dropbox link in the description. If you want to go ahead and check that out, you can bring the files onto your computer, check them out, both the photos and videos. And if you want to, you can download DJI's thermal analysis tool and check out those thermal photos for yourself. Okay, now moving into the second portion of our video, we're going to cover the intelligent flight features that are now made available thanks to the camera here on this drone. So after you start to use this camera system, the more you'll realize that what makes it so powerful is how well all of the sensors work together. For example, when you capture a photo while using the wide camera, a photo from the zoom and thermal cameras are saved simultaneously so long as you toggle this in your settings. This is huge because you're able to fly around while using the RGB camera, line up your shots, snap your photos, and then when you get back to your computer to offload your data, there are thermal photos right there to accompany them. And this also goes for a video. So video is also simultaneously recorded from all three sensors at the same time. Another quick tidbit of information, when flying around using the wide camera, you'll see this box in the center of your screen, and that is the equivalent frame that the zoom camera will see with its current level of zoom. So as I zoom the camera in here, that box gets smaller
smaller and smaller. Utilizing this is great to reorient yourself if you become lost when zoomed really far in. Now, one of my favorite features that this camera system offers is called high res grid photo, where you select the area that you want to capture and the amount of zoom, which will ultimately affect the amount of photos that you need and the final resolution. From here, the drone ticks away capturing photos from the zoom camera that are then stitched together to make exactly what the name says, a high resolution photo. I've showed examples of this in the past. For example, this one is my favorite. It's a 17,000 by 17,000 image that was stitched together from dozens of zoomed in photos that gives us an incredible amount of detail all in one single file, one single photograph. Now this is an example taken from the H20T, but with these camera systems being so similar, you can take the exact same photo on both the M30 and M30T. I mean, this is crazy. You can see the individual screws and wire connections. Now something that we touched on a little bit more in depth in our overview of the M30 drone itself is Smart Track, which is a feature that resembles Spotlight and Active Track in other DJI drones as the camera trains on a subject and adjusts to zoom to keep that that subject in frame. While the zoom camera does all of the work tracking, you can switch to the wide camera to get a full perspective as well. Now taking this a step further, by utilizing the laser rangefinder, the drone is able to determine the real-time location of the subject that you're tracking. It's able to accomplish this by taking all of the available information, the aircraft location, direction, distance, and height to provide that location, which like Pinpoint, can be relayed back to your team through DJI Flight Hub. Now, the final thing I want to touch on here is a brand new feature added to the camera system on the M30 and M30T, and that is smart low light photo. Let me tell you, I haven't been blown away by a feature like this in quite a while, and trying to figure out just how DJI made this work kind of makes my brain hurt. So what you're looking at right now is a screen recording of my M30T hovering in the middle of the night. This is in a dark parking lot, and my car is sitting just in front of the drone, but you, of course, can't see this. Now, the FPV camera does a really good job at seeing in low light, so you can actually make out where you're flying, but this lacks in overall definition. Now to quickly give you some orientation, here is a shot from the thermal camera so you can get a sense of what the area looks like. If we flip into smart low light photo and take a photograph, here is what the wide camera picks up, which really isn't horrible, but it's also not that great. You can definitely make out that there's a car in the parking lot, but beyond that, there isn't much detail. When we look at what the zoom camera is able to capture though, the amount of detail is just insane for it being pitch blackout. I mean, you can go as far as seeing me inside of the car. It's just incredible the amount of detail that is picked up in this shooting mode when it is pitch black outside. And so guys, that pretty much wraps up everything that you need to know about the camera system on both the Matrice 30 and the Matrice 30T. It is incredibly powerful. There's so many awesome features built in. If you want to learn more about the drone itself, I also made a full aircraft walkthrough, which will be linked in the Matrice 30 playlist down in the description below. As always, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me know if you have any questions down below and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.